Critias continues his contribution to Socrates' Symposium. Poseidon enclosed the hill in which she, Clito, dwelt all round, making alternate zones of sea and land, larger and smaller, encircling one another. There were two of land and three of water, which he turned as with a lathe, each having its circumference equidistant every way from the center. We already know that for ancient peoples, especially the Egyptians and Greeks, nothing exists except what the gods had some reason to create. So as we read these creation myths, we should keep in mind that they reflect assumptions in the absence of modern knowledge about how things came to be. If we read them as metaphors, as I secretly suspect many ancient peoples did, we'll be fine. Now let's have a look from the less exciting but more explanatory modern perspective based on material reductionism. According to the Wikipedia article on the Rishat structure, quote, the circular distribution of ridges and valleys is explained as the formation of suestas by the differential erosion of alternating hard and soft rock layers uplifted as a dome by an underlying alkaline igneous complex of Cretaceous age. How's that for material reductionism? Also according to the Wikipedia article, the Rishat structure is the location of exceptional accumulations of Acheulean, that's proto-human, artifacts. The article goes on later, quote, Artifacts are found, typically redeposited, deflated, or both, in late Pleistocene to early Holocene gravelly mud, muddy gravel, clayey sand, and silty sand. End quote. Tantalizing Atlantis hunters to the very end, the paragraph concludes with quote, Numerous concordant radiocarbon dates indicate that the bulk of these sediments accumulated between 15,000 and and 8,000 years before present, during the African humid period. These deposits lie directly upon deeply eroded and weathered bedrock. Let's repeat those last two sentences from the Wikipedia quote. Numerous concordant radiocarbon dates indicate that the bulk of these sediments accumulated between 15,000 and 8,000 years before present, during the African humid period. These deposits lie directly upon deeply eroded and weathered bedrock. This lends hearty support to Plato's account of the large-scale deposition of mud circa 11,400 years ago over a surface previously exposed for a long period to water and weather. This long period of weathering and erosion of the underlying bedrock would have meant that the area was clear of mud and that the channels were filled with flowing water for use by the putative Atlantean civilization up until the time of its destruction. This accords with both the paleoarchaeological record and with Plato's story of Atlantis.